Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, and welcome to uh, the Air Canada Centre as we take a look at the Gladiators of the Gilded Gazebos tonight. Jonathan Bernier, 2-1-1 one one, lifetime against the Ducks, 2.28 in those games. And Jonas Hiller is 0-3-0 against the Leafs and a 5.06 goals against average. Randy Carl admitted that he might be a little bit nervous playing against his old team tonight, and Bruce Boudreau said, last time I was in here, it didn't go very well, so everybody's paying for their tickets tonight. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's one way to get out of it, Gabby. Gabby's had some fairly deep <laughs> pockets over the years, I'm sure. He is a delightful young man. If you ever got a chance to spend some time with him, you're going to leave with a smile on your face because you're going to laugh a lot. We're underway, we're glad you're along with us here on Sportsnet as across the line, Palmieri with a long shot, a big rebound, and it's knocked up onto the right wing side and pushed towards the line, and not a rattle right back in again. Riley unable to get that from Bernier. Now a loose puck in front of the Toronto goal, pushed to the near side for Mason Raymond. Raymond trying to control it, but can't. Lupel has it, and tonight's starting lineup brought to you by Intact Insurance. Your home, your auto, your business is a shot is taken by Hiller and Hell. Ask your broker about Intact Insurance Company. Pretty indicative of what you're going to see tonight in the first shift. Some pretty good speed and an offensive push by Anaheim and then a counterattack with speed by the Toronto Maple Leafs. It could be a track meet tonight as both, both these two teams can skate. And here a little look off by Raymond. Good work by Anaheim defense to not allow the pass to go across and a good read by the goaltender Hiller. Face off to the right of Jonas Hiller. He's never beaten the Maple Leafs and had some problems in games that he's played against. Draw one by Toronto. Been around the boards by Paul Ranger. Cut off there by Cam Fowler. And the pass comes up on the wing and set out by Cogliano, but intercepted. McClement rolls it right back in again. Levo into the corner. McClement with them, but couldn't get the puck. And a penalty coming here. And a good forward checking by Levo may have uh, brought about this penalty. The first power play of the game. Well, Lovejoy gets caught for the hook. And again, a little chip here and a good shoot-in location by McLaren. That allows Levo to get in on a fine forecheck, and then afterwards the penalty by Lovejoy here as Levo fights for the puck, wins the battle, and then because of that, there is the stick across the gloves. Leafs' power play has been excellent. It is second in the league, 10 of 36, and in the last five games, 6 of 19. But up, dishing it off. Branson ahead for Van Riemsdyk. Drops for Bozak. Bozak to the far side, now back to Phaneuf, off on the wing of Kessel. Kessel stepping in with a pass that was out of the reach. Branson in the corner now, side of the net for Van Riemsdyk, he tries to push it out in front, Bozak couldn't reach it, and it's rattled to the line, but not out. Nice save there by Branson. Phaneuf to Branson, being pressured hard, trying to get it away from Nick Fanino, and it is sent out and down the ice. Played quickly ahead, and Kessel tips it in over the line. It's going to be grabbed there by Brian Allen and sent out into the center ice area. Gardner back pedals in his own zone. Jake Gardner coming out. Minute to go in the power play as he hits the line. Sits through. Couldn't pull the puck, though, as Allen got enough of him. Back to the blue line, and Mason Raymond couldn't keep it in. It's going to slide all the way back into the Toronto zone. Morgan Riley back there, trying to free it up, and he has. Raymond, a rink-wide pass off the skate, but unable to push it ahead was Gardner as it sent back into the Toronto end. Gardner's a little too far ahead of the play there. He's got to get back with his partner to give an excellent out to Morgan Riley. There's Riley, up ahead for Mason Raymond. For Cadre, and the pass into the slot was picked off rather adroitly there and sent out and down the ice by Ryan Getzlaff. Pass for Raymond is too far. Allen back to recover the puck. Just a dozen seconds left in the penalty. Colton Orr trying to muscle it in against Getzlaff. Now he does and slides down the board, but it'll be cut off by Lindholm. Lindholm taken to the board by Orr. The puck comes out on the center ice area for Perry. Knocked down by Phaneuf and down into the zone. The first penalty 
has expired in the game. Lead pass, did Orr touch it? Apparently he did. Thinking it was icing, Brian Allen, nonchalant at that. It's around the boards and back of the net. Far side for Patrick Maroon, and up ahead it goes. Here's a chance for Silverberg, and he can't get around the defense. A rolling shot is easily handled there by goaltender Jonathan Bernier. Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey on Sportsnet. Brought to you by Molson Canadian, diehard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. Ryan Getzloff, we all know what he can do offensively, but he brings a little different element to the rink each night, and one of them is his defensive play, which he brings every night. And what a terrific play as he tracks through the middle and takes the puck away from a potential scoring chance from Luke. Lovejoy plays it around back of the net. There's Salani trying to get it in front of the net for Perro. At the blue line, a long shot goes wide. Lovejoy throws it around to the far side. Fowler trying to get to it, but he's unable to keep it in. And he'll have to go back to regroup at his own blue line. Ben Lovejoy chased back by Lupel, the former duck. And Lovejoy is able to pull away from the late winger. Played in off a stick and down into the Toronto zone. Bernier. Quick up now on the wing for Raymond, and ahead too far for Kadri. Solani drops it back. He's heading for a change. Ducks send it back in, and now Emerson Adam heads to the bench as well. Now back into the near corner, and it is brought out by the Ducks. Lindholm. Unable to penetrate the leaf blue line, backhanded into the zone now. And Gardner puts the brakes on to elude one, but he gave the puck away only to have a Clement help him out and get it out at center ice. Onto the near wing it goes, and unable to play it into the zone, Dave Bolin. Back the other way comes Cogliano. Cogliano pulls up at the half boards. Ranger took his man down, no penalty. And up on the wing it goes as Boland is able to push it down. And here's McClement racing after it. He's got Lebo in front of the net. The pass for Lebo. And a nice play there and a quick stick. Denied the opportunity and it's out into the center ice area now for the drop pass by Winnick. And a shot taken there by Batman. He was the one who broke up the rush at the other end and jumped into the offensive flurry. Laid out into the center ice area. That's gone into the open door and out of play in the Anaheim bench. Well, when a good, you have a good puck handling goal here, and you want your defense to get away from you. And here's a good example here. Bernier gets the puck behind the net. Riley does a good job getting away from the goalie, giving him an out, and then a nice break out, out of the zone. And Riley under pressure. Look how he peaks first. That's the key. The little peak. He knows who's available, finds him, and then the Leafs get out of the zone. Face off coming out into the center ice area as the puck went right into the bench of the Anaheim Ducks. Lovejoy. Drink wide. Fanuk stepped into his man. Palmieri got it in over the line. Getzlaff is there looking for Perry and finding him. Perry in over the line trying to drag it through, but good play by Fanuk to cut it off. And now it is launched ahead at center for Kessel. One man to beat, and he stick handled the puck off his stick. Fowler looked like he might not be able to catch Kessel if he got another stride on him, but when he stick handled, the puck rolled off the toe of his stick, centering pass, broken up. Getzlaff bringing it back the other way with Palmieri. Getzlaff in over the line, in for Palmieri! went right to the net with him and everybody ends up in behind Bernier except for the little rondelle which ended up in the corner no penalty the ducks are asking for one right here because they feel that Kessel did not have position on the play there is the giveaway now Kessel put his head down he'll take his man to the net gets left with the delay wow and I think the Leafs got away with one there for sure Ooh, right into your living room comes the two players a face off down to the right of Jonathan Bernier they're all a little bit wondering on the Anaheim bench why there wasn't a holding play on that by Kessel as he did not have position defensively when Palmieri was going to the net Bodie gets the puck out at center or runs into his man Bodie 
knocked down on the plate, trying to drag it along, but it's brought out at center ice now by the Ducks and sent by Silverberg into the zone. A pass then by Bernier. Got to Troy Bodie and he sends it out into the center ice area. Another good plate right there by Jonathan Bernier and exiting the zone with a good pass. Daniel Winnick along with Troy Bodie, two of the players drafted in the ninth round of a draft who have played over a hundred games in the National Hockey League. It is a nothing-nothing tie here in the first. Well, there's Bruce Boudreau behind the bench. Of course, a lot of history in this city. As a Toronto Marley, as a youngster all the way up and playing with Randy Carlisle as well. And it's interesting, I asked Boudreau, do you have a favorite hockey story about Randy Carlisle? And he said, I don't know if I got a favorite hockey story, but everybody around Anaheim is still calling me Randy. <laughs> they do have a little <laughs> bit of a resemblance. Uh, uh, we had a good laugh this morning over that. Uh, well, ever since he took on Patrick Waugh, this team hasn't been beaten. Neither is Patrick. No. <laughs> Here's Kadri going down into the corner. Jim Ralph had a great line about it, asked about how many fights Gabby Boudreau had been in? He said five. Lost them all, but four of them were domestic. <laughs> Jim would know. Oh, yeah. Long shot deflects wide of the goal. Round back of the net is Lupo. Lupo works back to the blue line, slides it back into the corner, and it's shot out and down the ice. Had a chuckle with Gabby about that before the game. And a nice charge coming here against the Ducks. Tonight's keys to the game are brought to you by Tim Hortons, official coffee of the NHL. Well, the Anaheim Ducks, their special teams have been brutal so far. They're five-on-five five play excellent. they got to get their special teams going on this very long road trip. And for Maple Leafs, the big question is, can they handle the size of Getzlaff through the middle? You heard Doug McLean talk about that Bozak's going to need some help from the wingers in this situation because it gets last tremendous skill and size. High stick knocking it down the ice. It'll be waved off as Gardner corrals it. Up ahead off Lebo and into the zone. A Clement goes around back to the net. Poland took the bad angle, couldn't get to the puck. And a lead pass. Lebo's back checking. Now brought in by Perry and his shot was deflected weakly wide of the net. Flipped around back of the goal and down the ice. And it'll be the Ducks going back to recover it with Lovejoy. Gave it away to Josh Levo, chopped it around back of the net. But Clement able to come up with it to Levo, centered in front of the net! Oh, and unable to get a backhand away, there was Bozak coming off the bench. Bozak in against the boards, Phaneuf pinches down, puck comes into the slot and it's pushed ahead, and here's Palmerian over the line. Palmieri with a shot deflected into the screen, off the stick of goaltender Jonathan Bernier. Slap is pretty good at times doing this. In fact, very good. But he tries to do a little bit too much of the about McLaren there, and then the least created some pretty good pressure because of the giveaway by Getzlaff. Look at the assist that this young man has had. Corey Perry of two, of course, the two predominant forwards on those successful Anaheim teams. Bob Pass didn't work. Poland plays it off the glass into the center ice area. And it is back into the neutral ice and fed up on the wing and knocked in by Koivu. Gardner around back of the net. Up on the wing. Levo couldn't get there. Kept in by Lindholm. Now around back of the net. Lindholm into the corner. Back of the goal. It goes for Daniel Winnick. Toronto native trying to push it up the wall. And does. Back from Koivu to the point to the far side. Now trying to bunt it in there was Lindholm, but it didn't work, and it's cleared by the Leafs down into Anaheim territory. Ducks with four shots, the Leafs with one. It has been a problem in the Leafs' arsenal. They've had a great shooting percentage, but they've not generated a ton of offense in the last three or four games. Back down into the Toronto zone. Bernier laying it around on the near side for Van Riemsdyk, who just gets it out. And a high stick, knock that down off the stick of Sammy Vatanen, and it'll be a face-off coming in the center ice area. The World Series Game 1. This period.
Brought to you by the redesigned 2014 Toyota Tundra. Tough enough for any project. As I was saying, and I'm a wee bit excited here, guys, because well, the World Series is coming back, and I know, Joe, you're excited, as is our producer, Mark Askin. Game 1, St. Louis, Boston, tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Sportsnet East, Ontario, West, and Pacific. There you go. All right. Down into the corner. The stick there from Orr came up on the Anaheim defender, and now it's pushed out into the center ice area. Silverberg trying to get around Morgan Riley, and he's unable to do so. Bodie and Riley trying to come away with it. Smith does, and it'll be played by Trevor Smith to center ice. And on the right wing side for Patrick Maroon. Bodie tipping it, but it won't get out. A long shot in traffic blocked in front. Riley is able to cover it up, and he skates it out at center. Morgan Riley in across the line. Looking for Kadri, and it goes down into the corner. Change is coming for both teams. A weak shot deflected in on goal off the stick of Raymond as the stick exploded. Enough trying to get the garbage out of the way, and it is played down into the Toronto zone. And a penalty coming here for interference. So the Leafs will be a man short for the first time in the game, and we return. There is no score. A bit of a slow start. Timo Solani has that jump back in his game. He's got three goals in the last three games, and here's this little stutter step we see him do so often, and pushes the puck by Phaneuf, and Phaneuf draws a penalty for interference. And Morgan Riley's had a real good start to this game, playing with confidence, a good outlet pass there up the middle, and then a one-on-one -on -one play will give you a couple of quick examples of how he's been excellent here so far in this first period, doing some nice work there and getting the puck back, retrieving it, and then getting it out on a one-on-one -on -one defensive play. Leafs have dropped the seventh in the NHL in penalty killing. Over their first five games, they allowed one goal and 18 times short. The last four games, four goals and 16 times short. First power play of the game for Anaheim. And uh, as well as they played five on five, their power play's been abysmal. Three of 32, they're 28th in the NHL. The people they've got to employ on the power play, you wonder and feel that that's going to improve. Here's Salani. Off a skate, it's going to carry him out into the center ice area. Lachanen goes back for it. Out of the head for Fowler. Fowler to Getzlaff. Getzlaff with Salani. Getzlaff dropping it for Salani. Salani back to Getzlaff around back of the net. Bank pass for Fowler. Fowler with a wrist shot coming, knocked down in front. A backhand by Branson did not clear. Gets left centers, and it comes all the way back to the blue line. Fowler, Lachanen, back into the corner it goes for Getzlaff. Getzlaff has it taken away. Cody Branson sends it out and down the ice for Toronto. You can see the NI power play so far all perimeter. Maybe that's why they're having a difficult time in their power play. They heated up their last game where they got a couple on it, but it's been pretty weak so far this year. And across the line for the Ducks and into the corner. Round the board by Carroll. Blocked there. Palmieri sends it back around on the near wing. It's grabbed off there and sent by Raymond down the ice. Now Hiller out to play it away there from Boland who was in position. And it's brought out now by Kyle Palmieri. Got the puck ahead. Broken up and swatted in there deeper by Silverberg. Grabbed off then by Jay McClement. And he changes the angle and sends it down the ice. Ten seconds left in the first penalty for Toronto. Another terrific kill by the Toronto Maple Leafs in their penalty kill. They won every battle. They were first to the puck throughout the penalty kill. Harrell sends it in front. That's deflected by Van Riemsdyk. Fanuf out of the penalty box. He's able to one-hand it down the ice and then peel to the bench. 7.25 to go first period. The game looking for its first goal. Agliano in over the line. His shot, a pass in the rebound. Is taken back of the net then by Winnick. Winnick takes it into the corner. Tries to center, broken up, brought out by Kessel. Kessel trying to make a move along the boards and now it's Bozak. Oh, he had Ben Riemsdyk roaring to the net and center. And it just failed to connect with Kessel. Branson getting it ahead. Koivu sends it down into the Toronto end. Gardner around back of the goal. 
Cody Franson scoring at .777 points per game. Last year, he was at 604 per game. He's on pace to get 64 points this year. Seven assists thus far. The first nine games of the season. Here's Bozak with the shot deflected wide of the goal by Patrick Maroon. Sent in off a broken stick. Bozak trying to corral back of the net. Ran into problems there with Lovejoy. Got some help from Mason Raymond. Raymond stick handling around the debris. Finds Kessel around on the boards to Fanuf. Fanuf can't shoot it at the net. Kessel to the middle of the ice. Shot went off an ankle wide. Raymond to the blue line. Fanuf just does keep it in. Mason Raymond can't. And it is brought into the lead zone then by Fanino and brought up into the corner where Carl Gunnarsson plays it to the line but not up. Off the skate it comes to Lupo. His pass is nowhere near Fanuf in the centering feed for Solani just failed to work. Not kept in by Vatanen and it is offside. From Air Canada Centre, you're watching Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey on Sportsnet. It was the 92-93 season, 76 goals for Timo Solani. That was the most goals that year and the most goals ever since in the National Hockey League. And, yep, remember this, baby? <laughs> and he's still going strong, and what a remarkable athlete, the way he continues to play. And not only play but contribute every season and this will be his last year in terms of what he is telling everybody and he will be missed by the game not only is he a great player but a wonderful person as well Randy Carlisle was a teammate of Salami that first year but Randy played only 22 games he had a great line and he said that he was on his farewell tour that year but he was the only one that knew it Played right by Kadri back of the net, too far for Lupo. Incidentally, in those 22 games, Randy Carlisle had one assist, but it was not on any of the 76 goals that Solani scored. And an offside of the Anaheim blue line. For help finding the best tires for your vehicle and your budget, talk to Cal during our Don't Wait for Winter sale. Featuring the Michelin LTX Winter. Sale ends November 2nd. Joffrey Lupo's played very well, but his line mates have been somewhat unsettled so far this year, and I'm sure he'll be glad when Clarkson gets in the lineup, and perhaps things will settle down a little bit that way. He gets Kadri most of the time, but when Kadri's having a bad game, he loses him, and then Bolin ends up on his line, and I think it's fair to say it's been a bit disjointed for him so far this season because of the injuries. With 10 points, Lupel is 11th in the scoring in the NHL. Yeah, it's, that's the great thing. It hasn't hurt him at all. In fact, he's been terrific. Comes back to the goal. Gunnarsson started out. Now it is fired around the wall and right at the blue line to bring it into the zone is Bozak for Kessel. Looking for Van Riemsdyk and he sends it back across the goal crease. Paul Mary. Tied up and forced off the puck by Carl Gunnarsson. Dion Phaneuf works it into the far corner. Now he starts out with a little bit of room. He'll try to weave wide on the left. Ran out of room there as Lovejoy was closing down on him. Fowler turns in the Anaheim zone. Under four minutes to play first period. Gardner back pedals. Finds Paul Ranger up ahead. It's deflected on to Jay McClement's stick. He couldn't get it into the zone, but now Koivu has regrouped it. Turning back is Cam Fowler to Lovejoy. Pass is deflected down into the Toronto zone. Koivu was loose in the slot. Bolin got back to get into position, but the puck's still in the corner. Winnick to the blue line. Long shot wide of the goal. Rebound near side, fed in by Cogliano. Boland has lost his cue, and it is now laid to center ice by the Leafs after it looked like Josh Levo had been tripped. The Leafs still have just a single shot on goal. Popping in with a pass into the slot, and it'll be grabbed off there by Paul Ranger. Ranger looking for a man. He's got Bodie breaking. He fires a long shoot in. And a little derisive cheering regarding the 
shot on goal by the Maple Leafs. I think David Clarkson's had enough of skating after <laughs> practice, and he will be chomping on the bit to get back in the lineup in Columbus on Friday night. Yeah, 10 games is a long stretch to start the season. And Dave Donis looking forward to maybe getting the club that he envisions at the beginning of training camp or into training camp onto the ice. As Nikolai Kuhleman, Mark Frazier, also getting close. Frazier McLaren as well, Joe yep, this week. Exactly. They get the Winnipeg Blue Bombers back up there again. Back down into the duck zone, laid out onto the right wing side. Riley plays it ahead. Smith on the wing for Orr, and Orr will go into the corner after it. Orr and Beauchemin. Puck comes free, and it is played out on the right wing side. Here are the Ducks in across the line with Maroon working in a goal! Scores! Nick Fanino on a perfect play on a two-on-one. The Ducks open the scoring. And right there, a collision is Franson. Franson and Bodie get all tied up right at their own blue line. Creates the two-on-one. And a perfect little play right across. Yeah, this was a pretty little two-on-one. It was played pretty well as well. Bonino's going to get but the goal. Bonino with going to the net, stick down. Terrific effort, but little hold here holds the goalie. And Maroon with a great pass, and Bernier doesn't get across in time. But it all starts with the collision right at the offensive blue, or blue line by the midfield. Another five-on-five five goal for the Ducks, who are now plus 13. Their 24th goal, 5-on-5 five five against, 11 against, and uh, the Maple Leafs now minus one 5-on-5. Five five. So for Benino, it's his fourth goal of the season. And a 1-0 Anaheim score on their sixth shot on goal. The seventh one was deflected high, Adam coming across. Arrow cycles it back along. Ranger intercepts. Fed it back up on the wing. And Kadri trying to spring Lupo, but they were almost standing beside each other. And an icing charge coming here against the Ducks. This period brought to you by the redesigned 2014 Toyota Tundra. Tough enough for any project. Perfect feed through the goal crease from Patrick Maroon. And Bonino with his fourth of the year. One man from Hartford, Connecticut. Arrived uh, in a trade with San Jose. And Travis Moan going the other way along with Kent Huskins. And it is a 1-0 Anaheim lead late here in the period. That goes into the bench again. And another faceoff coming in the center ice area. Maroon has great speed, and he used his outside speed and his re reach on this play, and then the pass right across the crease, and Bernier maybe could have got a stick on that. That was pretty tight to him as he moved across. It was on his wrong side, not his strong side to do it, but nevertheless, he cleanly had Bernier beat on the play, and the pass across, and it went underneath Bernier before he could get there. Just two shots on goal for the Leafs, the fewest in a period thus far this season was three against Minnesota in the first period back on the 15th of October. Back down into the Toronto zone, chopped high to center ice. Bozak nudges his Van Allen to the boards. Van Riemsdyk sent it to an open wing. Hammered off the wall there by Palmieri to center. Gunnarsson to Fanuff. Enough got it ahead, too far there for Bozak. They'll try again. Gunnarsson this time on the wing. And Reinsdijk sending it down into the zone. Centering pass went off the skate of Bochum out wide of the goal. And it's out into the center ice area. In that game with Minnesota, they had three shots in the first period, just four in the second. So getting pucks to the net has been a major concern. 
for the Leafs in recent games. Branson. A pass ahead. That doesn't work. Five seconds left in the period. Josh Lebo can't get in over the line. And it's pushed in over the wall. And there is the horn to end the period. Benino from Maroon and Silverberg at 17.38. The only score we have. And it is 1-0. Let's go to Darren. One to nothing in favor of the Ducks of Anaheim with just eight shots between the two teams in the first period. And it was uh, Nick Bonino who scored the goal. Let's go downstairs to Scott Morrison, joined by Damian Cox. Thanks, Joe. A couple of general managers in attendance tonight, Steve Eiserman and Peter Shirelli from Tampa and Boston, respectively. But their business tonight has more to do with Team Canada, the Olympics. Eiserman and his management staff have fanned out across the NHL, starting to do their scouting. They'll meet in a couple of weeks in Toronto after the Hall of Fame induction to fine-tune their list. I'm not sure they saw a whole lot in that first no, period. No, not a whole lot there. You know what I didn't see a whole lot of? Of that banging lead team from a year ago. And when you start looking at reasons why they're not being able to create a lot of offense, part of it is they are not making physical contact with the Anaheim Ducks or a lot of recent opponents. And part of that is quick low puck movement from the other team. And part of it is the Leafs just not being able to get to the places where they go. But they really built a team identity last year, being the hardest hitting team in the, in the league. I just don't see it. Now the stats from the first period say the Leafs had 15 hits to 11 for the Ducks. I don't know. Did you remember? Do you remember any? I just don't see that same emphasis on that part of the game, and maybe that's why they're not creating as much offense. No, none of those hits were memorable, that's for sure. Joe? All right, thanks, guys. one nothing in favor of Anaheim if they're the first period, and uh, Jake Gardner led all. Leaves a nice time at 7 minutes and 39 seconds. Ryan Allen had 7 minutes and 50 seconds for the Ducks. Trying to... Uh, add a little bit more to the list of statistical information shots on goal those blocked and ones that missed the net 17 for anaheim nine for toronto and toronto at the faceoff dot not been very good so far winning just 41 percent of the draws parole however for the anaheim ducks won all five of his faceoffs for Jonathan Bernier, if he can keep the puck moving in those situations, he'd be better off than creating a face-off to his right. Face-off is controlled by Toronto. Dug out by Bozak, but unable to find Kessel with it. Now it's down into the corner, being chased there. Carl Gunnarsson after his man centering pass is deflecting. Look out, that's gone up into the seats. And uh, Mr. Young fan over there, he looks like he's all right. And there's the aforementioned Mr. Shirelli and Iserman in attendance. Adam Creighton, a former teammate inside his boss, Pete Shirelli, as Adam works for the Boston Bruins. They've got some uh, very tough decisions to make, and uh, maybe a name or two we're not expecting to make that club to make it this time around. Down into the corner, Ranger for Poland. Flipped to the line, volleyball back, but then broken up and brought in by Josh Levo. Dropped and then unable to take it to the net with Poland. Lindholm back the other way. Into the near boards, tries to play it down into the corner. Poland in, it comes out in front. A poke check there by Bernier. Freed things up as that was coming right out in front of his own goal. No icing here. Campus Lindholm back behind the Anaheim goal to the near wing and played by Bosham and the center. In over the line, it goes too far for Sackler's Koivu. A long lead pass, oh, and it went off Raymond's stick. He was in alone if he handled the feed. Here's Salani back the other way. Came with Salani, pulls the brakes on, rolled it to the side of the net. Round back to the goal. Branson got to him, but it comes back to the blue line. And the drive by Lovejoy is off the mark wide. Rebound near side for Lupo. Lupo to the left wing side for Raymond. Raymond stops. Gets back on his skates. Now looks to send it to the net, but that doesn't reach the goal. As it's brought out by Solani at center. 
Lovejoy will just send it in and peel to the bench. Drop pass there for Carroll. That was stopped, but there's a rebound in front. Unable to spin and get a shot away was Sammy Bachman, and it's down into the corner. Now wrap around, coming out in front, the shot scores! The aforementioned Mr. Perro that you were talking about has just given the Ducks a 2-0 lead. Well, the initial shoot-in, normally Bernier would go get the puck behind the net, but it was on the glass. It was a good shoot-in by Anaheim, so he couldn't do that. There, around the glass it goes. Now it goes to the corner, and a terrific little cycle here by the Ducks. Bernier just hugs his coach, lets out a bad rebound, but nobody recovers it. And Perot will just get the puck, and he just rolls off his check. And everybody's watching and taking their man and not taking Perot on a one-on-one -on -one defense down low. Riley gets beat here, but now... They just wait and wait, and he gets too good a positioning pro, and then he'll just fire it through traffic, and Bernier doesn't get out of his crease enough, and gives a lot of the top half the net away, and all of a sudden it's 2-0 for Anaheim. Vatanen along with Eaton is going to get the assists, but, and it is 2-0. By the way, I should mention as well, Don Waddell is in the building tonight, and he is one of the staff members for Team USA so you would imagine he might be looking at Mr. Van Riemsdyk a little bit in this game tonight I would guess. Here's a look at this goal again. Good role play here by Pro to get by Riley. Now, now you got to switch. Riley's got to take the man in front and his partner has to at least take Parole when he gets in a good scoring position and nobody can took him and he just rifled it in past Bernier. Centering pass back to the blue line and sprawling to block that was Troy Bodie. And to, to me, it looked like the puck two went on end, and that's one of the reasons why Roll was able to just fire it up right up top of the roof and hurt it. Here's Orr rolling it in over the line, trying to get to it. There was Smith. Trevor Smith in along the board. Orr puts it in front of the goal, and Bodie couldn't come up with but a penalty coming to Anaheim. Ranger back to Troy Bodie, a shot. That's blocked. He gets another one, and it's shot off a body and up into the screen out of play. And it is a hook that is coming up here, and it will send the Leafs to their second power play opportunity of the game. Good work by Colton Orr and Bodie to come off the bench and create a little energy after his team gets scored against. And Colton Orr here on the aggressive forecheck gains possession of the puck, puck, and there is the hook right there. Pretty good shift by the fourth line players. Although Bozak goes along with the two wings. 2.46 the time of the penalty. Second power play opportunity of the game for Toronto. And they'll have to start back in their own zone. Kadri starts up front with Lupo and Raymond. Here's Riley for Raymond. He let that go and that's going to turn into an icing. Confidence level of this group that was so high to start the season is down a court at the moment. And it all starts again. A lost faceoff on the power play in the offensive zone creates an icing play and then a bad entry and back the Leafs are in their own zone again. And we able to win that faceoff. Gardner around back of the net. He starts out, but he's being hampered there by Cogliano. Now Lupo. A rink line feed. Here's Cadre into the corner. Raymond trying to help out, but Cogliano has it, and he'll send it the rest of the way down the ice. 2 0 Anaheim. Gardner. To the red line. Dishes it off, goes after it himself. Has it around back of the goal. Chipping it back to the blue line to Morgan Riley. Riley's quick shot. That went high into the near corner. Round back of the net for Lupo. Lupo banks it back to the blue line to Gardner. Over to Riley. Riley stepping to the middle of the ice. Dishes off to Cadre. Lupo's gone to the front of the goal. The pass in front for him. Down is Jonas Hiller, and he's got a hold of it. Pass was partially blocked and lost a lot of its momentum. Pro Hockey Life, the ultimate hockey megastore. Miller just puts his pad down, paddle down, and good work by Anaheim's defense to box out the Leafs. 
At the point for Nuffin drive, and that was just off the mark wide. Branson can't reach it, sent by Bonino down the ice. Enough will take it and start out. Got about a couple of passes, then drops for Kessel. Kessel onto the left wing side, unable to handle that with Mason or uh, Van Riemsdyk. Then Van Riemsdyk gives the puck away, and the Ducks send it out and down the ice. Two shots for the Toronto Maple Leafs now, almost 25 minutes into the game. Kessel hits the line. Left wing side, too far for Van Riemsdyk. Down the ice, it goes again. Anaheim penalty killing has struggled as well. 22nd in the league. They've given up six. Here's Jay McClement. Knocked down there by Maroon. And it is grabbed off by Smith, but he can't find anybody in front of the net. Turnover there, but it doesn't materialize. <coughs> Excuse me, as it played down into the Toronto zone. Penalty has expired. Ducks back at full and even strength. Police. Trailing two to nothing. Here's Dave Bolin working in over the line. Into the spot for a shot. What a save by Keller off the stick of Jay McClement. The Leafs only good scoring chance right there. And as a goaltender, it's not easy when you don't see much work like Hiller has not seen. You know, trying to keep your confidence and your focus level. Not confidence, but focus level. Confidence is an issue. What a save there by Hiller as he just snaps his glove off out and makes a tremendous save. On McClement, who had that puck labeled, he waited. And that's just a beautiful save by the goaltender, Hiller. But again, difficult when you have not had many shots in work to stay in the game. And Hiller, with great focus there, makes a big-time save to keep his team up by two. Jay McClement, looking for his first goal of the season, was robbed there. Round back of the net. Bachtonen got it ahead. Carroll has escalated the lead with a goal here in the second period. Morgan Riley for Cadbury. Down the boards, Raymond with the defenseman pinching at center to come back to the blue line. Near side now for Allen, and his shot is blocked, and here's Lupel racing away. He's got Mason Raymond with him. Lupel to the net to Raymond! Oh, Lee McEnall, what a save by Hiller! A two-on-one to perfection, but the goaltender was better. Terrific read. Well, the Leafs finally getting some scoring chances. And as a result, get two great opportunities, but Jonas Hiller comes up strong. Laid ahead now for Perry. Rink wide, bouncing puck over the stick of Palmieri. He is hammered into the boards by Fanuf, who gets it on to Kadri. A lead pass on for Kessel. Offside as Kessel was knocked off the blue line. And some shoving here after the hit by Fanuf. But a huge save by Jonas Hiller on a perfect two on one. Well, Allen with a horrific giveaway right at the offensive blue line here as he just fans on it. Creates a perfect two on one situation for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Hiller, though, nice left pad push to get over right on Raymond. And then afterward, Fanuf trying to get his team going a little bit here with a nice body check, clean body check, and Paul Mary. And that's what the Leafs need a little bit in the captain leading the way. They need some energy. They've got to get some passion and get in this game a little bit. It's coming here in the last couple of minutes. Kessel jousting a little bit with Paul Mary. And the Ducks control the faceoff. Fowler. As it tipped in over the line by Palmieri. Corey Perry takes his man in from behind. There's going to be a penalty here to the Ducks. Here's Kessel getting it out in center. And as it is touched by Ben Lovejoy, here's the call. It wasn't uh, a hard hit, but they're judging it to be from behind. On Gunnarsson. Oh, boy. You know, it... If they start calling that, we get problems. That's a that's a body check, I mean. But then he called a slash after, maybe. But they called the play boarding. So it was the initial contact, and... Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't get that one. 
Leads to their third power play. And have had zero shots with the man advantage over the first two. And starting with the puck from the faceoff circle has been a major problem. Here's Manuk. Starting out of his own zone, gives it off to Kessel. Onto the wing for Franson. He can't hold it. Down the ice it goes again. And at 34 to go with the man advantage. Manuk drops for Kessel. With speed to enter the zone this time. He'll stop. Looks for Van Riemsdyk in front. Back to Phaneuf at the blue line to Cody Franson. Franson banks it around to the far side for Kessel again. Kessel holding. Trying to find a little bit of room. Beauchemin chases. Now down low to Bozak. He's got a two-on-one in front. Franson with a shot. That was stopped. The rebound in front. They score! Talked about the need for the Leafs special teams to get going against a very good five-on-five -five Anaheim team, and that's exactly what happens here. Great pass there by Van Riemsdyk. And swing it across, win the battle, that's what he does so well. What a pass by Van Riemsdyk over to Kessel. And the U.S. Olympic team will like this play, that is for sure. As he moves it around, tucks it through the legs, what a pass. And Kessel makes no mistake, and he's in position A to throw it by. And a surprised, I think, Hiller, who couldn't believe that pass got through himself. What a tremendous play by Van Riemsdyk. Third goal and ninth point for Phil Kessel. And an important goal for the Maple Leafs. Franson will draw the additional assist. And it is 2-1. to one. Chandry going. He had the puck, I guess. Now it heads over to the far side as it bounces into the center ice area for Raymond. He'll drop it back. Carl Gunnarsson got it ahead. Did that touch anybody? Doesn't matter. Miller came out to play it. Now he tries to pump it around the boards. Knocked down by Lupo. Ducks play it to the near boards and batted out at center. And Dion Phaneuf is there. Gunnarsson up the middle for Lupo. Nice little move to gain the zone. Lupo with another nice little move to gain into the corner. But he's ridden to the boards hard by Getzlaff. Now bouncing puck. Lupo trying to get it back to the blue line and gets lap. We'll flip it down into the Toronto end. Hustling after it there is Adam and into the corner he goes. Emerson Adam trying to center and it's off on Dave Boland's stick. Boland's pass was knocked down but he's able to come away with it. A three on two rush for Toronto. Here's Boland in over the line. No one in front of the goal. He shoots it. They got the rebound. They score! Dion Fanon! Shifts before the power play was better. And there's a giveaway by Timu Solani right at the offensive blue line. A broken play as the shot gets blocked and then ends up right on the next step. Give for the credit. He followed up with the play and kept the gap tight between forward and defense. And when he did that after the initial chance goes off the leg, he's in position eight. A whack it right by the goaltender Hiller to tie this game up. And Anaheim's called a timeout. Two goals, a minute 19 apart. Has he raced a 2 nothing Anaheim lead? Kessel from Van Riemsdyk and Franson. Phaneuf from Boland. And it is a 2-2 two, two tie. And on the power play, Kessel gets the first goal of the evening here. And a real smart play here as he finds Bozak in the seam. Once he does that, he goes right, hides a little bit, comes off the post. And then the puck arrives for him. And that gave the Leafs the first goal. And then Phaneuf now to tie the game up at 2. Dave Boland with his seventh point of the season and his fourth assist. And the Maple Leafs in a 2-2 tie. The three-on-two rush looked like it had broken down. But as you say, Phaneuf read the play after the fact and Boland found it. Cleared in by Jim and Clement and Orr goes into the corner against Brian Allen. A hefty hit there that rattles the glass. 
puck out at center ice and in over the line now for Blanton and with a shot there's a big rebound in front and it's going to be cleared gingerly to the center ice area Allen in his own zone drops it back brought on now by Sammy Bakhtanen Bakhtanen into the corner Bakhtanen trying to get around Gardner penalty coming to Toronto Bakhtanen center stopped by Bernier on the short side it comes back to Bakhtanen again six attackers on the ice Fowler for Getzlaff to the blue line. Bakkenen shot is deflected by a sprawling Colt Moore. The puck is still free though, and back to the blue line. Fowler holding, waiting for traffic to develop in front to Getzlaff. Getzlaff to the far side to Bakkenen. Back over here for Fowler, and it'll be touched by Dave Boland. Here's the call. A hook will send the Ducks to their second power play. Jane McClement. Leave heading to the penalty box. The UEFA Champions League soccer coverage continues tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern on Sportsnet East, Ontario, West End, Pacific, and immediately following this game, stay tuned for Connected. Jay McClement in the penalty box here. Vatted in here going through the neutral zone. There's that little hook onto the arms, and that's why he's in for two or less. Second power play of the game for the Ducks. And a 2-2 tie. Into the slot area, and it is fed out in center ice. And down into the Anaheim zone. Changes there, and Bozak to the bench. Fowler up on the wing, gets left, had it roll off his stick. And very quickly, Carl Gunnarsson sends it down the ice. Fowler turning once more. Drops it for Getzlaff. Getzlaff to the line. Upended. Shot down the ice and a penalty coming here. Van Riemsdyk's going to get the gate. Getzlaff entering into the zone. Van Riemsdyk. Just gets his stick tied up here right between his legs and he tapped his foot. Gets left. He had helped that along a little bit, but a big opportunity here for Anaheim and a huge kill for Randy Carlisle's group on a five-on-three situation for an extended period of time. And at 27, they've given up a goal in two previous five-on-three situations, but they total 45 seconds. So Van Riemsdyk in the penalty box, and Jay McClement, who is their best penalty killer, is in the box for the minute 27 of the two-man disadvantage. Near side for Fowler. Fowler to Getzlaff. Down into the corner. Solani trying to move to the front of the net. Whoops, falling. And here's Getzlaff with it to Solani, and that was tipped into the corner. Back to the blue line for Fowler. Fowler to the near side to Getzlaff. Getzlaff down into the corner. Looking in front of the net for Perry, a pass in front is blocked by Fanuk. He gets up and uh, straightens a shin pad. Out of the far side, Fowler. Down into the corner again. Trying to center, nope. Solani is right there, hoping for a rebound. That went off a stick and wide of the net. Tamu Solani is third in all-time power play goals with 251. Looking for another as it comes in front of shot by Solani with an empty net. Didn't get it. Down is Benier. How did Solani miss that? And Solani just saying to everybody, calm down, calm down. Now he's going to call a team meeting here with Getzlaff to work on this five on three. And some good puck movement down low. Solani with the first shot picks it up off the board. So here's Perry with the wraparound. Nick just doesn't get through it. Ended up getting right in to Bernier. He was down and out. And Perry had lots of room. Here's Getzlaff. Doesn't shoot it. Near side, Fowler, down into the corner, Solani again. Side to the net, Bernier with the poke check. Can the Leafs get it out? They do! Dave Boland does a great job there. Well, a great stick by Bernier there in front as well on Getzlaff. Back in over the line, 15 seconds in the first penalty. Now to Fowler, down to Solani, back to Fowler. Getzlaff doesn't shoot it. Far side, back to Getzlaff again to Fowler. Fowler has it partially blocked by Franson. Out of the box, 
This is McClemmon. The pass comes ahead. Almost grabbed by McClemmon, who might have been away to the races. Huge kill for the Leafs penalty killers. A minute 27 of a two-man disadvantage. Fowler across the line. 20 seconds left in the penalty to Van Riemsdyk. Pass across. Just missed the post. Fowler with it again. Back to the blue line to Getzlaff. Over on the far side now for Koivu. Koivu holds. Saku Koivu back to the point. Fowler finds and shoots off the stick. Up and up and it managed to find the screen and go out of play as the penalty is over. Well, the Toronto Maple Leafs battle back in this game in the power play. They make it 2-1. And then moments afterwards, Fanuf joins the play to make it 2-2. Now we got two penalties. There's the first one. Here comes the second one. A crucial five on three. And Bernier with a tremendous stick and the best scoring chance for Anaheim. And the Leafs kill off the five on three power play. 7-16 to play in the second period. And the draw to the right of Bernier. Cadbury will face off with Daniel Winnick. And the draw won by the Maple Leafs. Played up on the wing for Raymond and launched out and down the ice. Lindholm back to retrieve it. Reverses the puck up on the wing, but the Leafs came away with it. Unable to get it in front, though, was Lupul, and it's an icing charge now against Anaheim. Impact Insurance is proud to sponsor the Toronto Maple Leafs and all the fans who keep believing. Intact Insurance, you're back. Bernier with a couple of saves, but the penalty killers worked extremely hard and took away the shooting lanes on Anaheim in that five on three and did a great job. This opens, there's a wrist shot right on, stopped by Hiller off the stick of Van Riemsdyk. About to say this opens an eight game road trip for the Ducks. They'll cover 13,215 kilometers over this eight game stay away from California. Pagliano now trying to drive the net. He was taken wide by Paul Ranger. Ranger battles with Pagliano. Pagliano loses the puck. Ranger trying to force it out and has. And Van Riemsdyk played it in over the line. Lindholm lost it. But back pedaling in his own zone as Boshima, he gives it away. A race for the blue line. Gardner had to make a little move. Now works around back to the goal. That was centered, but it went off a skate. Now the Ducks at center ice. Bonino, far side. That's launched in wide. They're going to call this icing. And so it'll be brought back into the duck zone to the right. I think this has been the best start of Winnipeg's career as a Toronto Maple Leaf. Defensively, he's been absolutely marvelous. And not really getting a lot of credit for it. But here he is. He blocks the shot and a cross-crease play on the five-on-three. He's hurting a little bit here, but he's in good position. Here he goes down again to create an area where they can't pass across or find. Look at the great stick here on Perry. Forces him to miss the net. You can tell he's hurting a little bit because he got the puck in the knee. And he grits it out and helps his team tremendously on that five-on-three kill. So the face-off in the circle to the right of the Ducks. Draw scrum, but control. Lindholm for Anaheim to the line, not out. Branson launches one high and wide. Mason Raymond plays it around back of the net. Kadri trying to get it away from his man. Lupul arrived on the scene, but it went high into the corner, and Lindholm will carry out now for the Ducks and clip it down into the Toronto end. Morgan Riley. A long lead pass goes off Kadri's stick. No icing. Played around on the boards on the near side. And out at center ice, it is sent by Bonino into the Toronto zone. Morgan Riley with a quick up, and Raymond couldn't handle it. Out of the goal is Hiller to play it around on the board. The Leafs two and the Ducks two here in the second period. Launched down into the Toronto zone. Gardner along with Ranger both back of the net, and Gardner comes out with the puck. Jake Gardner skating to center. He hits the line with a pass, gets it back again, plays it around back of the net. Josh Lebo couldn't cut it off, and it's out at center ice. Here's a 
turnover as Bodie couldn't get to it. A shot and a block there made by Ranger as it comes in front. And it is pushed out into the center ice area. Miller will leave it there. And up a pass comes for Corey Perry. Perry spun off the puck but plays it into the far corner. Peterborough native and now it's out into the center ice area and launched right back in again. But up for on back of the goal. His goal at 9.03 tied the game. Two goals a minute 19 apart. There's 4.20 to go in the second period. And on by Fanuk. Seemed to work out. Now back at center ice for Perry. Over on the right wing side for Lovejoy. Lovejoy drops it back. Long shot. The flex wide of the goal. Now back to the net it goes. Here's Getzlaff. Force wide. Trying to play it back, but it's cut off. Here's Kessel, one man back. He's in over the line. He's got Van Reeves like going to that. Kessel shoots it. Holy fucking oh, what a shot! Boy, the Anaheim Ducks have been giving the puck away, and the Leafs have certainly taken advantage of it a couple of times in this period, and there is just an unbelievable shot up over top of Hiller. Hiller, he waits, he waits, he's trying to find Van Riemsdyk. The pass is taken away, so he just rifles it, and boy, does he rifle it. A perfect shot. There's the giveaway by Getzlaff, the two-on-one. Delay, 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 look, boom! 3-2 Leafs. Super slow-mo shot. No room at all, right off the crossbar and down into the net. First two goal performance of the season for Phil Kessel. And the Maple Leafs have a 3-2 lead, but you can rewind the tape to the minute 27 of a two-man disadvantage that was killed off. And the Leafs with a 3-2 lead. Ranger gets the lone assist on the goal. Ducks can't get it into the... Toronto in, played by Lindholm to the far side, now on the near wing for Perot, Perot with a shot that's well high and wide, and it is tipped in by Lupo, and out comes Jay McClement, onto the wing for Boland, Boland into the slot for Lupo, and that was knocked away, it comes back into the center ice area, France is trying to play it back, chopped down into Toronto territory, and Franson takes charge back of the goal. Under three minutes to play in the second period. Off the boards and down into the Anaheim end, but this is going to turn into an icing charge, and it'll be brought back. Pro Hockey Life, the ultimate hockey megastore. Two shots in the first period, nine here in the second. The Ducks have scored 23 goals in the first two periods, just three in the third thus far in their eight games play. A shot, the flex wide, the rebound, goes back to the net. Losing his stick over there was Bernier, now he's shaking that cat in his stick hand. He may have uh, got it twisted a little bit, now a long shoot in, he's got to handle that, he's going to take a face off here and see if there's a problem as does it appear to be as he heads to the bench. The Leafs have taken their first lead of the game. The guys at our desk before the game talked about Phil Kessel and Doug McLean said hey, he's too good a player. He's not going to worry about him scoring this year. Well he was right and Kessel here with a couple of beautiful goals in this hockey game and moments ago Bernier a little bit of a concern here as he gets his hand caught. It was actually a stick and then there he twists his arm and his wrist a little bit it looked like he shakes his hand and uh, he seems to be okay however during a commercial break he seemed fine now around back of the net ducks trying to work it along maroon getting it down into the corner cut off there by gardner and now skated out bank pass for Orr goes down into the zone hiller decides he's just going to cover up with a minute 55 to go in the period Frederick Anderson is the backup goaltender, the youngster, and uh, won his first game in relief the other night. Yeah, he jumped right in and uh, 
Miller had a tough start, and there's the look at the general manager, Bob Murray, who doesn't look all that pleased at the moment after his team was up 2-0 here early in this second period. They saw it wasn't done correctly. They'll do it all over again. And who's gotten waved out? Oh, Kessler, uh, Cadbury has been dismissed. Jason Raymond moves in. Ross scrummed. Cadbury unable to get to it. Quickly brought forward then and shot into the zone by Nick Bonino. And coming out to smother that is Bernier, and that draws a collision in behind him. The faceoff will be to the left of Silverberg, the former Ottawa Senator who arrived in Anaheim in the big trade that sent Bobby Ryan to the Senators. That was tough for Ottawa, you have to think, because this kid is going to be a real good player. And Ottawa, it's an old story, you have to give up something to get something, and when they lost Daniel Alfredson, they wanted to fill that void with a veteran player, so they went out and did that, but they gave up a real good prospect, and that Silverberg, who's got four goals in the season, he got them early, hasn't scored in a while, but he's going to be a good player. And a trade that had salary cap implications written all over it. In the corner for Koivu. He's knocked down by Dave Poland, but they don't get it up ahead for Jay McClement. They'll try the near side. Got three centermen on the ice, and McClement has it out. McClement to Boland just out of his reach. He's going to get to it to deny icing, and it's around into the corner for Gardner. Jake Gardner now hammered in there a couple of times by Cam Fowler. He's down low. Holton Orr is filling in at the blue line. Now Boland trying to get to the ears, or at the point, sends it towards the net, it's wide. McClement back to the goal. Jay McClement shielding the puck to the point to Fanuc. His wrist shot is right on. He's trying to get a stick on that to redirect it. Was Orr. Less than a minute to go, says Andy Frost. And it's out into the center ice area for Cogliano. Cogliano up on the wing, chipped into the Toronto zone. Wow, they're saying that Koivu did not make contact with that and that it is an icing charge. So Koivu's going to have to come back on the ice, I believe. Andrew Cogliano has not missed a game since he came into the league after his play at the University of Michigan. This is number 467. Wow. So the face-off is in the circle to the right of Jonas Hiller. And Bozak leans in here against Peril. And the draw is won by the Leeds. Into the slot for Kessel. Kessel with a snapshot that goes wide of the net. Fowler will get it up on the wing to center. Carl Gunnarsson tied up there, but it is sent in on a delay. And so back of the net and up with a half minute to go in the period. It has been an enormous second period for Toronto, who fell behind two to nothing when Perrault scored. But then Bill Kessel and Fanuc would tie the game. And Kessel has given them the lead with his second goal of the contest. An icing charge with 16 and a half seconds will come here. Back down into the Toronto zone for an important face-off. Bozak will take it against Getzlaff. Shots on goal are even at a dozen apiece, which is a long ways from the two the Leafs had at the end of the first period. Bozak wins that drop, and up hammers it off the boards. Van Riemsdyk got it out, brought back in offside. Leafs will head down to Columbus, tangle with the Blue Jackets on Friday night, and David Clarkson will get first opportunity to pull that blue and white jersey on for a real game. will bring about some roster moves for Dave Nonis. At least one and maybe some other players getting healthy. 
And another energy player that the Leafs could use in a situation like tonight in the first period when they had nothing going. And that's where David Clarkson can come out, create a little energy, make something happen with his veteran presence and maybe a valuable asset to this hockey club. Here's Bozak in over the line, trying to set it! Oh, and it went right past Kess. Now we've got a scrap going with Kyle Gunnarsson and Corey Perry in front of the Anaheim bench as the horn goes. They are separated. Here's what happened behind the play. Perry's a nasty oh. piece of business, and Gunnarsson went right after him. So after that breaks up, the Leafs enjoy a one-goal lead at the end of two. Let's go to Darren and the panel at Sportsnet. Commentator's clothing provided in part by Z Zenya, available at The Bay in Toronto. Highlights of three other games in just a moment, but I want to tell you on the eve of Daniel Alfredson's first game against his former club, Sportsnet's Arash Madani chats with the former Senator's captain to discuss his decision to leave the nation's capital and his new life in the Motor City. Catch the interview tonight on Connected. You'll play the Senators here twice before returning to Ottawa. Have you thought at all about going back there? When I'm there, I think... Uh, it's going to be extremely emotional, but uh, you know I think I would have dealt with most of all the uh, media and everything uh, beforehand, and that uh, that works in my favor and it makes me feel more comfortable. Canucks against the Islanders tonight. If you have the Sedins in your fantasy pool, you have a big night going. Henrik Sedin scores his third off of Daniel Sedin's effort. It's tied up at three. Winding down on the second period, Jenny Nabokov gives up another big rebound. That's the second one that leads to a goal. Chris Higgins slams it home. 4-3 Canucks going to the third period on the island. Habs at home to the Oilers, who confirm that Taylor Hall will be out four weeks. First period, Montreal on the power play. Andre Markov to Thomas Pekanich. He beats Devin Dubnik. 1-0 Montreal. Dubnik looking for a third straight solid start. Buck 27 later. Ryan Jones picked off. Brendan Gallagher takes it himself. 2-0 Habs. Give him some help. Devils against the Blue Jackets tonight. Second period, Jackets down 1-0 on the power play. James Wisniewski point shot. Blue Jackets will host Toronto on Friday night. Dave Clarkson's first game of the year. Brandon Dubinsky scores his second, tied at 1. Under 5 to go in the second. Cam Atkinson walks into the slot and rips the backhand behind Corey Schneider. 2-1 Columbus there. Dion Phaneuf and Phil Kessel with big second periods. More on that with Scott Morris and Damian Cox from ACC as we continue on Sportsnet. Norman Sailor Jerry Collins, undisputed father of the old school tattoo and a true independent spirit. We make our rum in his name. Distilled in support of craft, liberty, and whatever the hell you wish to pursue. Made the old school way. 92 proof. Bold and smooth as hell. Watch hockey wherever you are with NHL Game Center Live, your pass to live NHL games. One subscription lets you watch live out-of-market games how you want, when you want, wherever you are, on your computer, tablet, smartphone, and connected devices. Take control of the action with digital DVR, multi-game views, and your choice of home and away broadcasts. Watch hockey anywhere with NHL Game Center Live. Sign up today at NHL.com slash GCL. We can be named number one in customer satisfaction for vacations. We can offer packages to over 850 hotels, condos, and all-inclusive resorts. We can have a rewards program where you earn WestJet dollars for your next vacation while you're on vacation. But WestJet owner Lauren McPherson, knowing what goes perfectly with a fresh-baked lobster, that's what makes us fly. Every WestJet owner knows what they do every day makes a difference. Green Bay. It's Dallas for sure. Aw, oh, you guys look hungry. For lots of Dallas touchdowns. Dallas! 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 Dallas will be forced to play their backup QB today. 
This could spell trouble for Dallas, who needs a bounce. Green Bay. Green, Green Bay. Bay. Green, Green Bay. Bay. Green, Green Bay. 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 Listen to your sports gut and get way into the game. Pro Live. Is that chicken? On a pretzel bun. Pretzel bun. Wendy's new pretzel pub chicken. Seasoned chicken with melted cheese sauce on a warm pretzel bun. Now that's better. Imagine all men with sensitive skin would stop shaving. A way better solution? Nivea Men Sensitive Skin Aftershave Bomb provides an instant cooling feeling from the world's number one men's skincare brand. It starts with you. The high jump, approached the same way for decades, is suddenly changed forever when a man dares to jump back first. By flipping convention on its head, Mazda created the all-new Mazda 6 with bold Kodo design and revolutionary Sky Active and iActive Sense technologies, all to deliver unparalleled safety, performance, and efficiency, defying convention. This is the Mazda way, and this is the all-new Mazda 6. Kessel has his first two goal games since April 25th when he scored a pair against the Florida Panthers. Let's go downstairs. Scott Morris and Damien Cox standing by. Thanks, Joey. Spoke with Leafs assistant coach Craig Cronin and asked him how the Leafs were finally able to generate some chances and then inevitably the three goals. And he said one of the big difference for them in that period is Anaheim really likes to pinch their D down on the wall. A giveaway there that led to the two-on-one and a near miss for Mason Raymond. But he said when they found a way to get the puck by the defense, the pinching D, they were able to get their speed involved in the game. And then a situation here where Cam Fowler takes away the pass, but he leaves Phil Kessel with a quality chance and he puts it away, a goal scorer's goal. You know, you and uh, Chris Simpson were talking in the pregame about, you know, for the Leafs, they're good players, have to be their good players. It seems obvious, but sometimes it really makes a difference. And tonight, obviously, Phil Kessel with a couple of goals in the second period, but the captain, Dion Phaneuf, I thought really made a difference. Started creating some energy by uh, with some hits. And then he scores a big goal. He doesn't score a lot of goals, but he jumps in. This penalty kill turned out to be huge in that, in that period. Phaneuf was a big part of it, along with Tyler Bozak and Carl Gunderson. So a really good period for him. Interestingly enough, Phaneuf didn't play the most of any lead defenseman in that period. That was Jake Gardner. I thought it really started to make a difference in the game when he started jumping up ice. Well, it's a cliche, but sometimes your best players can be difference makers. Joe? All right, thanks, guys. 3-2 lead to take to the third period. Uh, Bill Kessel, last hat trick he had, gets you on to go back a little bit. October the 8th of 2011 against Ottawa. That was his third career hat trick and his only one as a member of the Maple Leafs. Just in case you wanted to know, Mr. Millen, and I know, uh, Joe, a lot of times you want to know these things. I know they do. Yeah, they do. And for goal scorers, they sure do. That's the way he plays. No question. Now, Gunnarsson and Perry getting minor penalties in that little fracas at the end of the period. So they're in the box. Four on four here. Gardner chases his man. Silverberg back to the blue line. Back into the corner. A little too far for Getzlaff. Getzlaff has it stripped away by Gardner, and the Leafs break out. Kessel on the left wing. He's got Bozak trailing, and it's knocked out into the center ice area. Phaneuf having some difficulties. Silverberg in on the wing. Can't get a shot away when he dropped it back. Getzlaff shot it wide. Here's Kessel dropping it back for Bozak shooting. And it doesn't make it through, but Kessel's there! And he backhanded it just wide. Here's Bozak. Trying to kill off some time while he gets some new players onto the ice, but then France and Fand on the pass. And it's out into the center ice area. Fowler dropping. Drive off the shoulder of Bernier. Koivu letting that go. Koivu trying to get around Morgan Riley. Riley ties him up, but it comes back to the blue line. Long shot into the breadbasket and held 
by goaltender Bernier. Well, a special day yesterday, and uh, we honored this man amongst many at the 19th annual Canadian Sports Media Achievement Awards held at the Royal York Hotel. There's Joe alongside uh, presenter Jim Ralph, and uh, 335 on hand to honor this man for his Sportscaster of the Year Award. Three pretty good goaltenders here, one in particular, but his hero Johnny Bauer there to present him with the award. Joe, congratulations, as well to Bob McCowan, Steve Simmons, the late Mike Cassis, and Cam Russell as well. It was a great day. Anytime you get to have Johnny Bauer around, it's a big day, and that for me is well. I knew it. That I knew it. That meant to you, Joe. Congratulations, Thank partner. You. Well deserved. And uh, you know what? And as I told Johnny, it was much more exciting to see Nancy Bauer than John. <laughs> Nancy was there too. She Great. is a real, real delight. Here's Gardner in on goal. That was knocked away by Hiller. Gardner has the rebound. On the wing, it goes to Mason Raymond. Raymond in, fakes, then let it go, and off the post, and into the screen it went. And Jake Gardner gives you a little taste of what he can do. Oh, when he gets through the neutral zone and giddy up, I mean, he can go, and here's where he just gets that extra stride. Now he's gone as he breaks through two players, gains the zone. He's been doing a lot of this tonight. A shot on goal, and nobody there for the rebound, but Jake Gardner's had a pretty good night in terms of his jump when exiting the zone. And he's played the most of any Leaf player tonight. So Carlisle must like his game too. Josh Levo has been uh, awarded an assist on the Fanuf goal, so he now has a goal and an assist as it is played in over the line. Lindholm up on the wing it comes, near side for Palmieri, broken up and Cadbury starts back. Raymond in over the line on the left wing side. Tried to center, it was blocked. He has it again. Riley looking for the puck and gets it towards the net. Blocked it, but another chance in front of the goal. Oh, and Kadri had a glorious chance there. Riley back across the line for Joffrey Lupo. Tried to make a little move between the legs, didn't work. Back around the boards, and here's Gardner over skating the puck, and it's on the wing for Carl Gunnarsson. Hasn't Cadbury had a glorious chance there? Things are changing, gets off of the puck. I think it's fair to say at the moment his urgency is off a little bit, Joe, in this game and of late. And when your urgency around the net and your hunger just leaves you a little bit, which happens to players, particularly young players in the course of a long year, those opportunities don't win. Where normally you'd be there and they, for him, would go in every time. Kessel with an icing here and brought back into the Toronto zone. And the confidence level of younger players will go up and down throughout the course of a season, Ed. When his confidence level is up, Kadri doesn't miss too many of these, but a pretty good defensive play there on Ethan, but it didn't even get through to the net. But again, a great, highly skilled player. He's still young, and we all have to remember that at times, particularly in this market where patience uh -huh. sometimes doesn't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Patience. You know, sometimes you need a little with young players. Just a little, that's it. Yeah. I'm reminded of the cartoon of the three buzzards sitting on the phone line. One turns to the other and says, Patience, I'm going to kill something. <laughs> <laughs> Kessel, who had four two-goal games last season, has a pair here. Tonight, and a 3-2 Toronto advantage. And a shot off a leg from Maroon went wide. Now up on the left wing side and played down into the Anaheim zone, and it is icing against Toronto. For the fourth line on for the Maple Leafs. Oh, it's not too, too bad as Boland's on the ice as well as McClement. So really Colt Knorr is the only player on that fourth line on the ice as Randy Kyle juggles it around again. So the Leafs are okay in this icing situation. And it comes back to the blue line near side. Button and a shot down. Bernier, he's got it in the chest and he's going to hold on. And a face-off coming in the circle to the left. Well, back in 2003, Ryan Murray drafted both these two players, 28th and 19th. And look at the 
careers they have both had. Remarkable. Gets left from the Calgary Hitmen and Corey Perry, of course, from the London Knights. Around the boards, far side, Salani. And a nice little visit from Ty Domi. During the press box here during our intermission, as he and Tamu Salani were good friends and still are when they were teammates in Winnipeg. Around on the near side, chopped at by Raymond, ahead for Kadri. Kadri closed down on by Salani. Now played into the corner, and it's not going to reach Lupo, but he gets it to it now. Knocked off his stick by Vakanen, and it'll be brought out now with the pass up ahead for Tamu Salani. 11th in the all-time goal list with 678. Farewell tour. Yeah, when Randy Carlyle talked about him this morning, the one thing he said that really caught my attention was Solani loves the game, and every day he comes to the rink, all he does is have fun with the great big smile on his face. You know, he said some players make practice work sometimes. Never did he ever see Team Solani do that. Rolling puck in on goal, smothered by Hiller, and a face-up coming in the Anaheim zone. Molson Canadian Leafs Hockey on Sportsnet. Brought to you by Molson Canadian. Die-hard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. Salami is 15th overall in the history of the NHL with 1,436 points. And a face-off coming to the right. Oh, right off the face off a save made by Heller. That 76 gold plateau has been something that has sat there for quite a while. And Alex McGilney that year. Did Bowie's not wear pads that year? Or what? Boy, boy, there was an awful lot of storm. But Alex McGilney had that huge year in Buffalo. Same year Salani was lighting it up. A shot line of the goal. Big rebound! Heller got it! Bounces wide of the net. We're going to have to get another look at that. He got turned around and then roared back into the net. Somehow the puck stayed out. Centering pass off his stick. Chopped at. Played by Franson. Out at center. And the boys in the truck tell us that hit iron, not padding. Yeah, hit it flat. Riley sends it around on the far side. Van Riemsdyk. A lead pass that Kessel couldn't handle. And it's down into the Anaheim zone. Played back out again. Bozak for Kessel. He's across the line looking for three. Oh, and a pad save by Hiller. He got that away in a hurry. And uh, the 16th shot on goal was almost his third of the night. Down into the Toronto zone. Here's enough. Chipped in by Cadbury. Hiller out of the goal to leave it there. Raymond unable to pursue his man on an angle. Bachman into center with speed. In on the left wing. Salani to the net! Oh, and I think that Bernier may have got a piece of that coming across. He did. Left wing feed too far for Raymond. Bachman and plays it around back of the net. Raymond's going to get to a loose puck now, find a man. It's Lupo back of the goal. Lupo. Back to the blue line to Morgan Riley. Big rebound. Raymond can't get a shot to the net. Good hit there by Lupo to knock his man down. Lupo in the corner. Riley is shot right on. There's a rebound smothered by Hiller. And a face-off coming in the circle. But some tough moments for Bernier. One off the crossbar, and that save right there. Well, Solani's been around the net again tonight, and his best chance of the game came moments ago. Terrific anticipation here by Bernier, and he just gets his toe on the puck. A beautiful save at a key time in the game with 12.33 left, and his team up by a goal. So the face off in the circle to the right. 
Brought out now by Pantanen and up on the wing. It comes back. Allen with a pass at center. Gardner is able to break it up. The Leafs try to turn a three-on-two rush into something. But back-checking there was Koibu. On the wing for Cogliano. It rolls in front of the Toronto goal. And it is Bolin banging it out at center ice. Clement trying to get it in over the line for them. And Koibu turns now with a pass on the right wing. Winnick across the line. Daniel Winnick leading for traffic. And then sent it wide of the net. And now here's a two-on-one break. Van Riemsdyk with Kessel. Van Riemsdyk to Kessel. in a real good position here in a scoring chance and he misses the net on this. Bolgerman gets caught at first, then he gets back and now he's the defenseman back to a two-on-one. And a beautiful play again by Van Riemsdyk is he peeks past the stick of the defenseman right here. Changes the angle right there. And that enables the puck to get through to Kessel. Kessel a right-handed shot with that great release again. And this combination of Van Riemsdyk and Kessel is putting a show on for Don Waddell from the U.S. Olympic team program here tonight scouting this game. Phil Kessel with his fourth career hat trick. Second in leaf uniform. And it was many moons ago that a haberdashery here in Toronto would give out hats for three goal performances. Air goal, the hat trick. In those days, everybody who came to the rink had gone to a haberdashery. They all wore hats. Yes, there are all kinds of them. And the youngster Lindholm on this last goal was the defenseman that slipped and fell for the Anaheim Ducks. And that created the two-on-one break for the two speed balls. And Bruce Boudreaux is saying, what happened? Here he is here. There is Winnick and Lindholm will slip right there. He got caught and he just slipped trying to keep the puck in. And that created the two-on-one for Toronto. And a long standing ovation for Phil Kessel. Who decided that he liked Toronto. And so he re-signed here to start this season. And a lot has been forgotten about the Boston trade now. Well, these two together have some tremendous chemistry, and Van Riemsdyk goes to the net so well, and he's a playmaker, but, you know, so is Phil Kessel, and he doesn't get enough credit for his playmaking abilities. And there's tonight's goal. They're almost carbon copies. That's the last one where he deeks around and finds Kessel going to the net. So the face-off is to the right of Bernier, and the shot is into Bernier's chest and held, and with Corey Perry on the doorstep, that draws a bit of a motion from Bernier to uh, clean out the area of the crease. We talk so often about key things in games. The five-on-three penalty kill, huge in the second period. Now in the third period, a one-goal game, and here comes Bernier with a large left pad save on Team Ucellani. Two big moments in this game that have given the Leafs a two-goal cushion here at the moment. Laid up on the wing for Kessel, too far. And it's grabbed off there by Getzlaff. Down low, now Bernier trying to poke it away, and it goes back to the goal, and it is sent out into the center ice area. Getzlaff turns. Getzlaff up on the right wing side. Maroon with a long shot wide of Bernier. And into the corner it goes for Dion Pinot. Brought out at center by Bozak. Kessel is with them, needs a change, so he sends it in over the line. Approaching the midpoint of the third period, the Leafs with a two-goal lead and four unanswered goals. Kadri takes it to safety and gets it up on the wing with a bank pass for Van Riemsdyk too far. And it will be Hiller who is able to smother it and hold for a face-off down in the Anaheim zone. Face off to the left. 
of Heller. Centers and wingers seem to make the tandems that work an awful lot. You've got Getzlaff, Perry. But here it's the two wingers together that have been the lethal combination. And uh, they've all played center at some point in time in their career. But your point about the playmaking of Kessel has launched a lot of times. You're right about it. That gives them two weapons. As they them. go down the ice, they both have the ability to find each other in any situation, particularly in man advantage break, Joe. Into the corner, Raymond with a shot. He had Hiller leaning the wrong way, but it went wide. Now to the near corner, it's played for Raymond. Mason Raymond back to the blue line, fed back in again by Ranger. Jake Gardner unable to get it in deep. It comes to the blue line, rattled into the corner once more, and Ben Lovejoy plays it off. Leeds who had two shots in the first period now have 20. And four of them have gotten in behind Jonas Hiller. Onto the wing and chipped into the zone by Poland. Hiller was pulled out of the game the other night. And the youngster ended up winning his game. Now a chance. McClellan in front. Down is Hiller. Puck is still free. Jammed up. And on top of it is Ben Lovejoy outside the gold crease. The Leafs almost added to a 4-2 advantage. Sportsnet proud to present Molson of Canadian Leafs hockey from the ACC. Anything for hockey brought to you by Molson Canadian, diehard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. Well, our feature tonight is an easy one, and it's Phil Kessel, who has just been around the net all game long. There's his first goal on the power play, and then a beautiful shot on a two-on-one. That thing had eyes right off the crossbar and in. And then moments ago in this third period, great two-on-one play by Van Riemsdyk over to Phil Kessel, and he makes no mistake. And Doug Orr and the North Winnipeg boys were wondering if Kessel's ever had a four goal game and the answer is no 923 that's not Five. over yet no Brian Allen got it ahead at center Palmieri got in over the line against Ranger and a penalty coming to Ranger as it is touched and Ranger's going to get a holding call fourth power play opportunity for the Anaheim Ducks now does he lose position on Palmieri he holds him up that extra second, and the puck is long gone. Many don't like that rule, but it, the reason they put it in is to allow the forecheck to continue. And it couldn't happen there as Ranger was holding up his man on the way into the zone. Anaheim over three on the power play. Just a single shot of their 16 has come with the man advantage. Ranger in the box for holding. Here is Getzlaff in across the line. Gets it back to the blue line. A wrist shot is deflected by Getzlaff. Knocked down in front was Taylor Solani. And the puck is going to squirt out at center. And Jay McClement propels it the rest of the way down the ice. Out at center ice for Getzlaff. Broken up at the blue line by Jake Gardner. Boland couldn't get it. Further down the ice for Cody Franson, well, and that's off the stick of Mason Raymond. Down into the Anaheim zone. Anaheim power play has been a combination of very strong positional penalty killing by the Toronto Maple Leafs and solo mission efforts by Anaheim as they all seem to want to do it themselves on the ice on the power play. Dave Bowen got his bonnet knocked off. World Series Game 1, St. Louis and Boston tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Sportsnet East, Ontario, Western Pacific. And stay tuned immediately following tonight's game for Connected with Ivanka and Ken. We're looking forward to that. All of the highlights and a lot of the activity going on around Fenway Park in the opening of the World Series tomorrow night in Boston. Van Wagoners again going. Donnie Lester going tomorrow. <laughs> Got our man there. Centering pass block. Silverberg gets it back on the boards. It comes to the blue line. Beauchemin to the far side of shot. And Bernier got across there and made an excellent save on the right pass. Boivu gets it returned on the near half, or at least Benino back to the blue line to Beauchemin. 
looking back across to the near side. That's broken up. Palmieri in a little traffic. It comes to Benino. His shot is off the side of the goal. Cleared by Finuc into the corner. Grabbed out by Perro. Perro to Benino. Back to Perro. Perro looking in front. Finds Benino again on the near side. His pass partially blocked. Hammered into the corner by McClement. Now it's back to the net for Perro. Perro out of the box is Ranger. Long shot blocked. Race for the puck. Van Riemsdyk wins it. But can he win another race? He does. Penalty coming. Penalty shot. shot. Coming. A penalty shot for James Van Riemsdyk. Well, speed. Speed, speed, speed. And he just takes off on this play. There's the free arm, the grab. It eliminates the chance to score, although he does get it off. And here's off the boards. And the power protects the puck with his body, gets body position. But now we got a penalty shot. And this could seal a deal for the Maple Leafs with 6.50 to go. So James Van Riemsdyk in shootouts in his career, one for four. Here he comes, slowly at first. Backhand off the post. Threw it to the backhand, tried to go on the short side on the blocker and hit the post. You know, I like the move. With that long reach, he brings it to the middle and he has lots of room and Hiller, Hiller was beat off the post there, right off the crossbar. 6.59 to go in the third period. That was his first ever penalty shot. We mentioned he was one for four in shootout attempts, so... Brought out at center ice. Emerson Adam gets it across the blue line and then back to the net. Near side, Jay McClement turns. Up ahead at center for four, onto the wing. Poland had to secure it, and then I think he put himself offside. So it'll come back into the center ice area. Agliano had given Poland a bit of hack there on the way by. Bruce Boudreaux's team kicking off this eight-game road trip. Montreal, Ottawa, Columbus, Philadelphia, Boston, Buffalo, New York. Home. Two weeks on the road. How do you like that big? Be a lot of stickers on your luggage after that. McClement into the corner. Gardner playing it up on the wing, but it's cut off and sent back in along the boards. Ranger takes his man into the end board, or the corner boards. Cogliano and Orr pushes the puck to center. Here's a chance. Rangers in the rush. Back into the slot for Orr. And it went off the toe of his stick and into the corner. Bolt Orr unable to get it back to the blue line. Trying to drive the net. Gets slapped. And he did. And it was stopped there as Cogliano went hard to the front of the net. Here's Kadri. A pass ahead. Lupul in across the line. Tries to get it into the corner. It comes back towards the blue line. And the play of Getzlaff gets in over the line, and down he goes, courtesy Dion Pinot, who's broken his stick in the collision. Raymond, unable to get to it. Cadbury's without a stick, he's given it to the captain. And around back of the net for Maroon. To the near boards for Corey Perry. Shot off the side of the goal. Pinot, trying to move it out into the center ice area, and he has. And now a stick is given to Cadbury, who will end up going to the bench. Perry in the corner. He's around back of the goal. Perry challenged there by Finuk as it comes free to Getzlaff. Getzlaff holding. Pass to the side of the net. Stopped on the short side. Bernier now back to the near side. Perry can't come in front. Finuk chops at it. And Mason Raymond trying to get it out. He'll get some assistance. And Lupul will push it to center ice. Ozak misfired on a pass for Lupo. You know, we haven't talked a lot about it in this game, but the Leafs' defensive zone coverage against a pretty strong offensive group in Anaheim has been pretty strong tonight for the most part. 20 shots on goal, but here's the chance. Silverberg stopped by Bernier! Well, 
I spoke too soon, but the reason the Leafs run a bad change there coming off a tired ship, they didn't get it deep and they almost paid for it. Well, coming up after the game, Canada Vodka will be along with Connected on all the highlights and a look forward to the World Series. Hey, Joe, what's on Daniel Alfredson's mind as he gets set to face off against the Sens tomorrow? Alfredson and Rashford Danny one-on-one -on -one tonight. And on the eve of Game 1 of the World Series, the incredible influence and inspiration the Red Sox have had on Boston. Joe, back to you. Thank you, Ivanka. We'll look forward to that. Red Sox and the Cardinals beating again in the World Series. Long shot was high and wide of the goal. And it'll be played by Cadre to center. You better be careful about cheering for those. That Boston team, when our new boss grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, and anybody that grew up in St. Louis, Missouri loves their Cardinals. Oh, you know that? Cadre trying to find a man in front. It's one of the best baseball experiences oh, you're going to don't get. Don't try and get out no, of no. this, <laughs> I've been there. Hey, don't tell me. Yeah, it sure Show is. Show me. It is. <laughs> and... But that ain't stopping me from All right. for the Red Sox. Just check it. No, no. You know, living in St. Louis, you have an awful lot of respect for the organization. All they do is win, and it's yep. a, it is a great hockey town, but it's also a tremendous, obviously, baseball town. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's a baseball town, town first, that's for sure. Backhand shot by Koivu goes wide. He'll play it back to the blue line. Intercepted by Dave Boland and carried to center. Boland hits the line and couldn't get it past the defense. Laid out at center ice. Gardner with a bouncing disc to control. And now McClement trying to slip it into the zone. Has it hit the curl glass and go out of play. Tonight's game summary brought to you by The Brick. Nobody beats The Brick for furniture, mattresses, appliances, and big screen TVs. Well, Phil Kessel's been tremendous, obviously. Hiller, I don't know that you can really blame or put the blame on him in this game. I mean, the two-on-ones that have beat him. And the great shot by Phil Kessel. And Dion has been great again tonight. And I think we've said that a lot this season. Gunnarsson got it ahead. Van Riemsdyk taps it to the line. Laid down into the Toronto zone. Blocked by Fanuk. Then a shot off the side of Bernier. Comes to the near wing. Beauchemin sends it back in. Under three minutes to play in the third. Leads by a pair. Shot stopped by Bernier, rebound to Gunnarsson, and Gunnarsson trying to play it out, Kessel can't help, but then a volleyball is nailed out and spiked out at center ice by Carl Gunnarsson. Bernier back for Gunnar, around on the boards for Kessel, Kessel ahead for Raymond, Bozak into the rush, Raymond fan on it, but Kessel has it, Kessel looking for his buddy. Bozak was there, and Kessel had the crosshairs if he wanted to. We've seen that too this year. Yeah, we have. I mean, an unselfish player, and he was trying to find his buddy who had a little better shooting spot. He's looking back saying, geez, I thought I had him. And it seems it's like one of those nights where the puck is following Kessel. He tries to sneak it through, and a very strong defensive play there, and a good play by Cam Fowler. Bruce Boudreaux is going to go with six attackers here with 2.22 to go in the third period. And the faceoff wasn't done correctly, so they're going to do it all over again. And Dave Bolin leans in for Toronto. The draw scrum comes back to the blue line to Fowler, but it bounced over his stick. Ducks back in the own zone and now being hampered there by Jay McClements. Persistent forward checking. Solani turns. Final two minutes of time here at the Air Canada Center for Damon Solani, maybe. Round back of the net. Bernier up on the wing. Chopped high in the air. Is this going to have enough to go for icing? No, it doesn't. Well, I can tell you, he was thinking about it. The first time he got the puck, he was thinking, hmm, goal. And then he realized it closed in and made a tremendous play Bernier did. A centering pass. Big save. Bernier down. The net dislodged is crashing into it. Was Lupo as he went right over top of his netminder. But the first save was an excellent one. And the second was pretty good too, Joe. And 
Bernier, we shouldn't underestimate his play here in the third period. He's made a couple of huge saves. A two-on-one in Solani. A breakaway save moments ago, and there's the left pad, and then he comes back and sweeps his stick back as well in the rebound attempt as Lupo goes piling. Watch the stick here afterwards on Solani again. Oh, right and a there. Second yep. effort there also. And Bernier seems to get better when his team gets a lead. He just has the ability to shut it down. Ducks with 25 shots, the Leafs with 23. <laughs> Bozak out there, Kessel as well. And Bozak facing off with Saku Koivu. And the draw one, it rolls in front of the goal, knocked away by Bernier. Laid off the glass, and to the line, but not out. Long shot goes wide of the goal. Perry couldn't get it with a stick. Kessel racing after it. It comes into the slot for Getzlaff. Near side, Beauchemin. Former Leaf goes back to the goal centers. Off to the blue line, shot stopped in front of the net. Shot to the line and out. And 13 to go. Hired back in again by Lindholm. Bernier couldn't slow it down. He's get it up on the wing for Kessel. Kessel trying to get it out, but can't. Gets left at the blue line in traffic, a shot. Big rebound in front is knocked away and cleared by Kessel off the boards to center. And Bozak just saved the goals. That rebound went right to the slot, and Bozak was right there to clear it out of harm's way. Brought back in by Patrick Maroon. Pass into the corner it goes. Speaking of Cardinals, Maroon from St. Louis, Missouri. As it is played into the bench area with 38.1 seconds left. But what a play by Bozak, as you mentioned. Terrific play as the puck goes through traffic. I don't even know how Bernier saw this to begin with. And there's the rebound for the puck there. And look at the play right there as Bozeman had a 4 by 6 And a tremendous play by Bozak, being very aware, looking around behind him. And a strong defensive play that might have saved the goal there. Uh, Corey Perry got away with a trip as he hauled Bozak down right after the move. Got a timeout called here by the Ducks. Faceoff will be in the circle to the right of Jonathan Bernier. At the turning point in the game, I don't think there's any question, was the two-man disadvantage for a minute 27 with the Leafs' best penalty killer, Jay McClement, in the box along with uh, Van Riemsdyk that they killed off. And it wasn't long after that this game turned on a dime. It sure did. And that other save as well by Bernier. And Solani, when the score was 3-2, was another mark that you need to put down in this game. So the final 38.1 seconds left. Back to the blue line. Bakhtanen sends it in around back of the net. Knocked into the corner by Fedor. Perro trying to free it up against Bozak. They'll fight along the boards, but tick, tick, tick goes the clock as it comes around on the near wing for Carl Gunnarsson. He can't get it free. Played around to the other side by Jay McClement, who takes a glance at the clock. 14 seconds left. Off the glass to center. The Leafs will win their fourth game on home ice and their seventh game of the season to go along with 14 points as they'll head to Columbus to welcome David Clarkson back into the lineup. Final seconds to tick away for Jonathan Bernier to pick up his fifth victory of the season. You know, Joe, this game, the Leafs had nothing going for them after a period. Two shots, three shots, pretty well into the second period, at least five minutes in, they only had three shots. And that really summed up the way they were playing. And then all of a sudden, they found a spark and remember the hit by Dion Phaneuf to the captain that didn't hurt either early in that second period. Seemed to energize his team also. They're just checking on uh, the time. It's a uh, moot point. 2.6 seconds remaining. I don't think another tenth is going to make that much difference. But we're going to go through the process and make this legal. Now it's 3.6 seconds. Never really can get that. Let's just drop the puck and move on. Well, the goaltender is back in the net for Bruce Boudreaux, so they have conceded the night. And it will be conceded now as the faceoff is completed. Jonathan Bernier with the win. The Maple Leafs end a two-game losing streak and come away with a couple of important points, but more importantly, a better effort.
And the Maple Leafs, again, had nothing going but a pretty gritty performance the way they moved through the game. The five on three was huge. The big save by Bernier in the second. The big hit by Fanuf in that same period. That set up the turnaround for the Maple Leafs. Tonight's three stars are brought to you by Molson Canadian, diehard fan and proud partner of the Leafs. Bill Kessel with his fourth career hat trick. Dion Phaneuf is the second star. A big win for the Maple Leafs to move on to Columbus. We're going to step aside and join Canada Vodka for Connected. All of us here at the ACC. Good night, everyone.